Hi there. Just going to a little bit of cover where I found a really good gold coin last year. It's been just been ploughed. Um, it's going to be horrible, but I just want a quick look at it before um, it gets knocked back just to see if the plough has brought anything to the surface. But this is an incredibly Roman field. And I'm just walking up this path here, which I don't probably tend to do very often because I'm usually in the middle of the field trying to find Roman stuff. I mean, this is a really, this is the most Roman field I know. And there's a tiny signal just here. Now, it's not a cartridge. Um, it might be a bit of lead or something, but it might just also show that it's worth doing the very edges of fields. Because it's just there and it's not big at all. And I reckon that might be a Roman coin. Oh, see, I can see it. <laughs> it's not. But, oh, I really honestly thought that that might be something exciting. Anyway, let's go to this little bit of cover and see if we can find anything there. I thought it might be a bit like this. I think we're going to have to come back when it's been properly flattened. Well, not a complete waste of time because I've just found this rather early farthing and I've got a feeling, and I can't tell which way Grand Britannia is, but that might be George II. I'm sure it's George II actually. But they'll clean that up and we'll have a little look at that later. And I've got a signal down here. I didn't bring all my speaker stuff because I knew it wasn't going to be a, a particularly serious day. But it's just here. It sounds really squeaky, but signals are going to be very odd. Because you're, you're too far off, the, or, or, off the, where the signal's going to be because of the unevenness of the ground, the ground, the, the um, ankle breaking ground. But quite fun all the same. <laughs> but it's just in here. Task, come on, out the ways. Well, <laughs> but is this going to make it all worthwhile coming out here? It's, <laughs> it's a tiny little hammered coin, not in very good condition. <sighs> and it's got a shield on one side, does that make it Elizabeth? And on the other, Tasky, stop it, come here, come here is um it's a rose or yeah so there's no portrait on either side now i think that makes that charles the first charles the first rose penny or something like that um i've seen hammered coins in better condition but that's just amazing i've only dug two things well three things in this field um and one <laughs> one of them's been a hammered coin god I, I don't think I risk my, my, my ankles anymore on this. But nice to be out, nice to be out with him. I know this land really well. He can, he can go where he likes because however far he goes, he'll come back. And I know there's no roads here. Um, he's not in any danger. So um, that's been really good. Nice to check up on the place. It'll be ha power harrowed fairly soon. And then we can get onto it when it's, when it's proper. There's never much stuff here because it's just been done to death. But even in a ploughed field, I can winkle out a, a, a copper farthing and a tiny little 
silver coin. I mean, my God. <laughs> First find since we've dug this trench, and here it is. We can just see it there. That's a little Roman coin. Well done, Richard. Whoa. Okay. So that, interestingly, it's Celtic. It's a Celtic silver unit. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. never ever do this in front of anyone. <laughs> I'm here with a team of people who don't want to be on camera and that's fair enough. And you may remember, Richard, can you just stop for a second because I can hear you be <laughs> And you may remember, or I'll remind you about when I was last here this time last year and what I found. It comes out the same as when it goes in and that to me does not look like a wrinkle, that looks like gold. Whoa. <laughs> Part of me just wants to leave it like that. I don't dare open it because I haven't found gold in a while. And it's just, it was just going to be such a come down if I, if I open it and it's not gold. Anyway, let's go for it. I bet it's not now after all this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, it is gold. It is gold. It is I think that's a full stator. My and God. We've just dug this little trench. We've removed, as you can see, probably about half a metre down, down into this nice thing. Sam here. Say hello, Sam. Hello. Anyhow, we found a little um, bronze Celtic unit um, just, just there. And then just here, literally, the second signal that we've dug might make the whole thing of digging, doing what we're doing completely worthwhile because another gold stator just in here it's just a quarter one and there it is Isn't that absolutely fabulous I mean it, I can see the horse on one side I don't know which one it is I think the last one I dug up here was Kuna Berlin and that with that and that looks like it's going to be roughly the same but it's a quarter stator and not a full one I mean, that's absolutely mind-blowing. I just had a feeling that, that there was more here. And there's a very good reason that I had that feeling. I'm not going to go into all that now. But we started off very much in the area where I found the gold one. And, and look, it's paid off already because there's another one. And I'm absolutely blown away. Well, what an incredible coin. And one of the reasons that I do this hobby is to find Celtic gold coins like this and it completely justified as well the reason that we decided to excavate and dig that bit of land. I mean what a day, it was really really good fun. Conditions were really wet, it looked incredibly sunny, it was incredibly sunny but it had there'd been a deluge about an hour before and therefore I don't think it, it was perfect conditions to do the digging that we did in it was and it's very clay soil but the things we found there was absolutely incredible and as I said completely justifying digging it up in the first place I was so excited at the time I hardly did any close-ups on the day and there were too many people milling around completely throwing me off my stride I'm not going to go into the, all the reasons why we did decide to dig it up but finding this gold coin the year before was basically um what one of them I had reason to believe there would be more gold coins there um, and we were right. I'm not going to go on too long about this one. It's an early Warden Chase type. I'll point you to the video in the description and you can see it, it all the details of it in that one. But it's a lovely chunky um, Celtic coin. I'm absolutely thrilled with it. But the one we found on the date, albeit only a quarter stator, only he said, 
I, I refer to this book a lot when I do these bits. The link's in the description. It's a brilliant book. If you have any interest in Celtic coins or you have a possibility of finding them, I would definitely get it. Anyway, it's a Taskiavana's camel. It's got Taskiavan, it's got Tasky on one side. The reason I named my dog Tasky is after the ta after Taskiavana's. Um, it's got Tasky on one side um, and above it's got Camel, C-A-M-U-L. Now you can't read all of it and you rarely can read all of it in these coins, but you can see the M going into a U, going into an L on the top. And on the reverse is crossed wreaths and with teardrops and a, and a pair of crescents, back-to-back -back crescents. And it is in beautiful condition and an absolutely wonderful coin. Um, it dates to about 25 BC to 10 AD. Those are the rough dates we have for Taskevanus. I know I won't bang on too long um, too much about Taskevanus either. Suffice to say that he was a Celtic king in the area we own at the moment, sort of Hertfordshire, um, Cambridgeshire, that sort of thing. And it, and and it's an absolute beauty. I mean, it's in beautiful condition, like the like the, the, this one here. Um, just while we're on this one, it's an early wooden chase type. Um, there are, there's quite a, there seem to be a several types of early wooden chase, but it's an absolutely brilliant coin. And it completely justifies, as I said, digging it up in the first place, because this really cements the fact that it is an Iron Age, it, it could well be an Iron Age site. Now, you may start getting really excited and go, well, two gold coins, treasure. Well, I think I'm right in saying that it's three gold coins before you have to declare as treasure. Um, so we'd have to find another one in the same area before I have to hand these in. But... Another good question, which I get asked a lot, is what sort of deal do you have with landowners when you find precious things like this? Well, I'm going to be completely honest. I let the landowner know always of the bits and pieces I find. When it comes to sort of um, fairly sort of ordinary Roman bronze coins and fibulas and stuff, things which have an immense amount of value to those who find them. But if you put it on eBay, it'd probably make about £10. Um, with the Roman coins, you're probably lucky to get a quid for them. I don't tend to bother landowners too much about this sort of thing. And when I do, they go, gosh, that's very nice, you know, well done you but when you start finding things which are obviously of sort of, of of value then it's important that they definitely start having to play a you know a, a bigger role now when I found this one a year ago I said to Richard who's my mate I'm, I'm really lucky to be able to go on that ground it's basically next to the farm I grew up on and I know the farmer and, and the landowner really really well all my life I've known them I said to him well look I really I collect these incredible gold coins would you mind if I um, got a sort of conservative value um, having asked the experts and split it with you and um, I'll give you half of the value of it and keep the coin he said that's absolutely fine but now we've found another one I thought it'd be fun instead of instead of um, spitting in the, and, and, and keeping them, I said, this is before I found out what that one was. I said, why don't we just do that? And you choose one and, and whoever gets it, gets it, you know, gets the bigger one. He quite liked that idea, as did I. Um, but when I researched it, to the fact that it was Taskivana's, um, I got a bit more excited about it. And I said to him, well, look, do you mind if I keep the smaller one um, and, and, and you have the bigger one? And he was absolutely thrilled because actually that is a jolly nice coin. And I think I'm right in saying, I suspect the big one's probably slightly more valuable still, but, um, but, but, but the little Tasky of Arnus is definitely rarer. So I suspect there's not an awful lot in it. And I'm happy with my smaller one. He's happy with his bigger one and everyone's happy. And that's basically what should happen when you, when you start finding nicer, you know, nicer things. I always let the landowner know what you've got. Um, but as I said, more often than not, they're not that interested. But we obviously are. Um, anyway, I, I, we come back a couple more times. So I've banged on far too long. But um, thanks so much. Let's go back to the trench. Let's go back to the dig. Oh yeah, come over here. I didn't live dig this because um, I'm getting a lot of faulting on this. It's really, really driving me slightly mad. This was a tiny signal. What you got there then? I think it's a, I think it's a bloody Celtic Potin. I've only ever found one of those, but I'm sure it is. This, this is really quite exciting, I think, because we haven't found anything Roman yet, but literally, what do you reckon we've cleared? About a foot and a half? Yeah. And then they're about another two or three inches below that. That's the third Celtic coin. We've got bronze. Gold and I don't know what they made these out of. I think they're I think they're a type of bronze alloy. God, I'm pleased with that. That's brilliant. Well done. 
Well, you can't hear this, I'm afraid, because I haven't got my speaker plugged in and I'm being really spoiled today because I've got someone filming <laughs> rather than having to set the tripod up. But that sounds exactly like the other two things we've dug up. And at this depth, we're not getting cartridges and stuff. I mean, it's like every single signal could be. And that is just giving a very nice, quite a dull sort of, a bit of a leady sound. But then, but then gold can sound like that. So it's small. So clay, the soil. Yeah, it is too. I think it's going to be too little, whatever it is. But here we go. It's another coin. It's not a very good one. But the spoiling thing about. It's a little Roman one this time. The spoiling thing about digging at this depth is. That's three signals. Still, I've, I've, Richard dug one. He got that bronze one. I've dug three signals and I've got three, uh, one Roman and two Celtic coins. That's not in the greatest conditions. I said, there'll be something on it. Um, but wow. Thanks, Martin. Well, this is a real turn up because I haven't found that many of these and it completely cements the Iron Age activity that's gone on in that field and well worth digging. We haven't dug it particularly scientifically in hindsight and um, next year we're going to do a little bit more and we're going to take it a bit more seriously um, and, and, and do it in such a way that we'll uncover better uh, a better a load of land um, to go over a bit more thoroughly. And as I said earlier, conditions were so wet. My dais was struggling and giving me incredibly strong signals, which I simply couldn't detect with the pinpointer, unless they are huge things much, much further down. Um, anyhow, that's gone into cover that field now, so we will not be able to get onto it um, for until next year. But I think next year we'll, we'll have another good go and hopefully find loads more things to make an interesting video with. Um, now, this is a Celtic potin. They date slightly earlier than the staters, I, I, I believe. I think they're almost sort of early part of the first century, sort of cross between the late second century, early first century um, BC. And there's a picture of one here. It's called an angular bull. And unlike the Celtic, un unlike our Tasci of Arnus here, um, <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't fare so well on the rarity stakes. It says, uh, angular bull, cast protein unit, very common. Well, it's not very common, really, is it? I mean, it might be very common in terms of Celtic coins that are found. But I mean, I've only ever found one of these proteins. I found bits and pieces of them. They're slightly fragile because they're so thin. But because of the silver content, I think, is in them, and that's the silver in the title, I think they do have a bits of silver. Silver, tin, and copper. You get this very dark... Um, patina which is it survives incredibly well it doesn't it this one for example i mean could have been dropped yesterday i mean it's absolutely amazing and um, but had it been copper i think you'd expect a lot more wear anyway there it is there the angular bull it's got apparently apollo on one side god knows how they know that it looks like a load of sort of well, art deco circles to, and crescents to me but then the other side is a, a bull of sorts it reckons and um, we've got a straight line meet with its back and some wavy sort of uh sort of legs and something which looks like it might be a tail or a neck um but anyway oh, just uh, absolutely beautiful i'm completely thrilled and one more reason to, to really cement the, the the iron age connection is the bronze coin my friend and landowner found right at the beginning uh this is the first coin he's ever found using my spare dais i use for teaching um it's definitely a bronze unit no doubt about that it's got that sort of concavity convexness to it um i don't know what it is but there is definitely some detail on it and again here we go so bronze silver and gold <sighs> i mean that's just incredible incredible anyway thank you very much for listening to all that and we do come back one <laughs> one more time because i find a couple of incredible artifacts now well we've come back Task and me we've not got the biggest digger in the world and after the other day where we found three celtic coins and um, we had to stop for various reasons we all had to go off and do our own things but we're back now me and sam the digger man and we've cleared another very small area we're only going to do a line and we haven't gone down that far i mean it's a foot and a half maybe but it's just giving, it's getting us closer to the to the bottom and at every single decent signal I've dug, and uh, last time was four, I had three Celtic coins and a Roman coin, 
Today I've just had a tiny Roman coin down there. There's not many signals here, but I've got a signal here. And, you know, I think what's happening is that we're getting through all the dross and the cartridges and the rifle rounds and all the rubbish, and every single target is good. So let's just hope this one um, follows the mold. I don't have my um, speaker system set up, I'm afraid, but I can... That sounds like a coin. Sounds a bit leady. It's quite, um, it's quite... It's quite a low sound. I don't think it's silver. I think it's copper. I don't know much about um, digging at this depth. I'm getting a lot of falsing in this clay. Um, I hope this isn't another bit, but I have dug some deep holes and there's nothing coming on the pinpointer at all. I hope you can hear me through the plane and the digger. But that, I think, is something. I don't think the pinpointer gets through this, gets through this clay very easily. I, whatever it is, it's just there. Hooray, a signal I'm digging, which the pinpointers caught up with. It might just be a big bit of lead. Nope, here it is. Well, it's a bit of copper. Like we thought, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Gosh, don't know what it is. It looks like a sort of a key thing, but it's not. That is one of the nicest things I've ever found. But God knows that's got to be Roman or Celtic, hasn't it? Well, I don't know what that is, but after the last thing that turned out to be a pipe tamper, um, God, anything, anything could happen. Um, but that is definitely researchable. It's got to be Roman or Iron Age. I can't, I can't see anything more than that. It's got a ring there and a sort of feather coming off it. It's absolutely wonderful. Really pleased with that. They're not, it's not, we're just going to do one more line here and just see if there's anything sort of else. That's the, that's, apart from the tiny women coin, that's only the second signal I've dug. Gosh. <laughs> Tasky's been running around like a mad thing. He's coming back naturally though. There's lots of things with Tasky, stop it. No chasing your tail. No, no. This is, <laughs> this is very spoiling because this, this has been done for decades, this field. There's nothing on the surface. Not one thing. I've been over it tons of times recently. I did find that little, at the beginning of this video, that tiny little um, Ch Charles Penny, silver penny in the plough, but that was just flute. But um, it's just coming down now. Now this was, I can just see the thing peeking out. And to me, this looks like tweezers. This hardly made a sound. It must've been really just on edge. And I'm just gonna break it really carefully. Wow, okay. <sighs> well, <laughs> they are tweezers. <sighs> Not only that, I think they're silver tweezers. <laughs> um, got to be really careful. Uh, it seems to be missing the end there and even I'll tr I will have a look at look for it but I think it's just too small a bit of silver to be able to well maybe just like a little hammered coin we'll see but what's left is wonderful that's so fragile um that's probably Roman that's really that's just beautiful I don't think I've ever found silver tweezers it's, it's not copper I don't think so I think it well we'll see what happens when I get home you know I don't carry fascicles you know I don't carry girly spritzers, so I can't clean up here. You'll hear me now, maybe not through the bloody planes, but the digger's stopped. He stops at four o'clock. But um, that's just incredible. And just here, I've just, the most beautiful piece of pot. Now, um, why I don't find something like this on the surface, and yet you have to wait till you get down here to find it. I very rarely find pot with um, detail on it. But that to me looks like it has got lots of detail going round the, round it, unless it's just um, 
yes, it's got stripes on it. So that's really beautiful. Loads of, there's another bit here. There's lots, there's plenty on the surface here. You'd have a lovely time going through it all. But, um, but that's rather beautiful. Gosh, uh, I don't, well, 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 we'll see. I've been over it really quickly just to get anything sort of obvious. And now I'm going over it more carefully and digging. Sounds like those tweezers, which hardly made a sound at all. I mean, really, really faint. This clay is thick though. Hi there. Well, I really mean it. I think this is one of the best things I've ever found and certainly in, in the, the best condition. I mean, I think that when you get, I'm no expert in doing what we did that day. Hopefully in the coming years, if we do a little bit more each time, I'll become more expert. But when you get down to that level, I think what you're finding, even though you're still way above the bedrock, is stuff that hasn't been shifted around by the plough for that many years. I mean, the condition of this is just extraordinary. Um, it's the most beautiful object, and it's so tactile. I put it on the detectinghub.co.uk. Information below, who are brilliant at this sort of thing. Everyone got a bit quiet about it. They do tend to if they don't know what something is, which is fair enough. You, you can't expect people to go, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is. But anyway, people didn't know what it is. Um, but there was a couple of suggestions. Um, and one being that it may be a nail cleaner. Now, the fact that we found these tweezers very close means that, well, it's not beyond the, the, the realms of possibility, even though all the nail cleaners I've found in the past haven't been quite of this size. And the loop is definitely not of that size. They usually tend to be in keeping with the tweezers, which we'll come on to in a minute. But and if it, but it does look like there may be something slightly missing on the end. Now, the nail cleaners also tend to have a little V shape at the end like that. I'll show you a picture of one here. Um, and, and that doesn't have the V shape, but it's maybe because it's been, it's been chipped off or lost. Um, it definitely, with that sort of feathering and stuff I've seen on, nail, on Roman nail cleaners before. Um, but anyway, I don't know what it is, and nor does anyone else, it seems. So please let me know if you do. But it is the most delightful object. I mean, my God, I can't just stop touching it. The detail and all that, I mean, I, 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 words escape me, but what a lovely, lovely thing. And that brings us on to these tweezers. Now, I've got to be quite careful with these because they're really delicate, but I think they might be silver. I don't think they're copper. I don't think copper of that thinness would have survived that well um, over the years. I haven't done any sort of um, tests on them, but it just looks to me like they might be. Um, for the case of the flow and the portable antiquity scheme and all that rubbish, um, I'll probably say that they're, 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 they're copper. <laughs> And you can say what you like about that. Um, a lot of you asked me to talk about flows and the portable antiquity scheme and all the rest of it. I have thought I've had such bad experiences with the whole lot that I, I don't tend to talk about them if I can help it. Um, I do declare treasure items and I do let the coroner know what's going on. And it's up to them if they get back to me. Usually they can't be bothered, so they don't. Um, God knows what's going to happen with the Treasure Act if they start saying we're going to have to declare objects over 300 years old, which aren't gold and silver, which are of national importance. If some things of national importance then it definitely should be declared i've got two or three things which are going through it now um not not gold or silver but th they are really important objects so of course but i'm not going to bother the flow with the with, with rubbishy old um fibulas and stuff anyway i digress it's missing a little bit just there and um but apart from that that's what they are they're roman tweezers possibly i mean i didn't know much about iron age tweezers i'll have to look it up but maybe might they be iron age tweezers i don't know i don't think the um the celtic tribes of the british isles as it were um necessarily got into um, um personal cleansing stuff who knows anyway i'm absolutely thrilled with those two things i'm really pleased that was great great fun doing all that and i can't wait to do it again next year when we get uh, when we get a bit of a window and we'll be better at it next year and hopefully we'll find more things but i mean just uh, th these objects here um I, I i mean just wow i'm just thrilled anyway thank you very much for watching and see you next time